Hello everyone, welcome to Carnivorous Plants Hub. Uh, today I'm bringing you a quick video, giving you a little bit of a tour of my uh, grow tent right now with my Coray Grow Light. The um, reason I'm doing this is one of my biggest goals right now. Uh, as you guys know, I'm trying to start a Carnivorous Plant Nursery someday. Uh, hopefully sooner rather than later. But one of my biggest challenges living in the Pacific Northwest is how do I extend my growing season? So what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to figure out a way to extend my growing season on a, on a rather small scale um, before I put a real big investment into it um, and have to learn the hard way that, that I wasn't able to do it. So my, my goal right now is how do I extend this growing season beyond the beginning of, of October? At the beginning of October this year we had um, some colder weather I dropped down to the 30s and I could see that the Venus flytraps are already kind of getting ready to go into dormancy. And what I know and understand is that if I want to have a successful carnivorous plant nursery and to be able to sell these plants, I have to be able to extend my growing period beyond, you know, six months because that, that, would, put us, that would put these in dormancy from October to probably around March. And really what it comes down to is that's not going to cut it to be able to grow plants to sell plants. So you have to understand that my goal for selling plants might be a little bit different than your goal for just growing these plants. If you're just growing these plants as a hobbyist, it might make sense for you to put them in dormancy for five months and just let them do their thing and sort of let them naturally, you know, figure out how to grow here. Or um, you can do kind of what I'm doing. You can get some lights, you can extend your growing season, you can enjoy your plants and, um, you know, go from there. So there's a couple different ways of doing this. I'm definitely seeing some success. I'm seeing some failure. So I'm going to walk you through all these plants today so we can kind of just go over um, everything that's happening. So this is a mostly my Venus flight traps right here right now this is in all of my carnivorous plants um, but I got a good chunk of them in here so I'm going to show you these um, just for today because I just want to show you the grow tamp um, I got the Coray grow light um, I have my uh, my whole system up here that you guys can see in another video that I set up you can see it's ventilating out the front here uh, the Coray grow light has been really fantastic and it, you know it actually recommends that you have two of these Coray grow lights for a 3x3 tent um, and that's what I have here is a 3x3 tent, but what I have found so far is that actually um, it, the coverage area for this has been pretty good and the plants have been doing um, alright even kind of in the far corners. So uh, let's go ahead and take a look real quick and uh, just kind of show you all these plants sort of one at a time so you can kind of go through here as a little tour of, of this tent. So let's start over here in the corner. Um, I had a little bit of a gnat problem and these guys have been actually growing 100% naturally in a windowsill up until about a week ago and it wasn't, I didn't put them in here out of necessity. They're still doing really good on the windowsill, but I put them in here because um, I had a gnat problem. I've, got, I've had some gnats hatching in here and it's been kind of irritating for me. So you can see down here, they've been doing a lot of work in here, catching a lot of gnats. If you go to my last video, my update on these, you'll see that these didn't really have a ton of gnats on them. Um, but now you can see they're, they're doing a lot of, a lot of gnat catching. So. I've actually brought them in here for bug control, which is pretty cool considering that's kind of what these plants do and that's how they, they live and thrive. So, And you can also see too that I've had another flower bloom. I got two in here now uh, since the last time you saw these plants. So look, they're doing pretty good. Uh, they're doing they're doing really well. So those are my set, those uh, pings. So let's go ahead and jump over to here. You can see my, <laughs> these are a couple of Walmart Venus fly traps that I've sworn over and over and over not to buy any more of. Uh, I noticed that Rocket Farms had some different packaging and some different instructions on the back and I kind of wanted to do a video on that so kind of look out for that coming here pretty soon. Um, but these are just a couple of uh, typical Venus Fly Traps that I picked up at Walmart and uh, they've been doing actually really well. I haven't They've been in here for a couple weeks now, I haven't repotted these, I probably should have already. I typically like to repot um, the store ones but I've just been so busy and everything's been crazy but you can see that they're still growing and actually doing pretty well. So. I haven't had the huge urge yet to, to repot these, but I'm gonna do a video repotting these and kind of showing you the new Rocket Farm packaging and instructions so you guys can take a look at that. Over here, you have my, this is my B52 and UK Sawtooth uh, propagations. You can see, I just did a video on these not too long ago, so you probably have seen these fairly recently. Um, and then there's another propagation that I did uh, a while back. These ones desperately need to be repotted, uh, so I'm gonna be repotting these soon. Uh, you can see that there's a lot of the black they're doing well, they're growing fine, but a lot of the black is starting to overgrow them. Uh, so I really need to, to kind of clean these up and move them out to a different pot. Um, these, these here is a couple of, uh, these were Walmart rescues that I rescued, I think last summer. And I, they got tipped over by a squirrel. I've had a lot of squirrel problems this summer. 
so I need to I come up with a solution for that next summer, but uh, I thought these ones were dead uh, because the squirrel knocked it over and, and kind of picked on them. Um, I left them out there with the, with the white rice, I'm just hoping that they would do something, and they have. Uh, you can see they've actually made quite a little recovery. They're getting a lot bigger, um, which is not ideal because these were bigger when I bought them, but you can definitely see this one here, you can see I need to really kind of trim out some of the black. Uh, these desperately need to be repotted too into probably some bigger, deeper pots, but uh, they're, at least they're making a full recovery and I'm happy that they're, they're living and thriving now and doing really well. So uh, all these ones in these orange pots here, these were all my Walmart rescues and I do have a big video on that. I think I rescued 12 of them. So if you want to see my main rescue video, you can go check that out. But uh, all these, the, especially the ones with sand, I had some squirrel problems. Uh, but you can see this one's making a, a recovery and it's starting to grow really well. That one's doing really, really well. That one's looking nice. And then these other two are a little small, but they are growing. So I'm pretty happy about that after being knocked over by the squirrel. Uh, so that one's done pretty well, and that's probably going to produce four healthy Venus flytraps right there. This one over here is a little spindly, and I'm not 100% sure it's going to make it, but uh, it's looking it's looking okay. It looks like it's going to start to take off. So uh, let's move on to, uh, let's see, where should we go from here? Let's just go to this one here because it's right next to it. This one has had some struggles. I don't know what was wrong with this one, but um, it's finally starting to break through here. Um, there was one over here as well and it completely died. Um, I had to pull it out because it was completely dead, But and I thought this one was dead too, um, but you can see it's now starting to make a recovery and starting to kick out some, some healthy traps. So I'm optimistic that this one's gonna start to do um, a little bit better. I have to decide what I wanna do for dormancy on some of these that are not quite as healthy. If I'm gonna put them in dormancy and then cross my fingers and hope, or if I'm gonna skip dormancy for them this year and allow them some time to grow, that's a decision I'm gonna have to make here pretty soon. So um, we'll probably talk about that more as I make that decision. but. All right, let's come to the middle here. Um, these are my superstars. Uh, this is my B-52s right here, front and center. And I, you got my uh, DCXLs over here. And then my UK Sawtooth right here. And you can see that they're doing really, really well. Um, one thing you'll notice now is that they, they're all growing a lot closer to the pot. And I think that's because they've already kind of started dormancy a little bit. Uh, they were out in the weather. They were out in the like 30s and 40s for a couple days. And I was going to just leave them out there for dormancy, but then I decided that I have to figure out how to extend the season. So then I brought them in. So they probably got a little confused, uh, but they are growing closer to the ground, which is definitely a big sign of dormancy. Uh, but you can see this one here. Look at the size of that trap. That is a beautiful trap right there. That's a big old fly trap. Uh, so they're doing really well. All three of these are super healthy. They're super green. They're still putting out new growth. You can see there's new growth there. You can see there's a big one coming in right there and a smaller one. The UK Sawtooth is still putting out a lot of new growth too. So both doing really well. Okay, I'm going to go up this middle here. But here's another one of my Walmart rescues. Zoom in on this one here. And you can see this one is actually doing really, really well. Um, the other one did die in this side, but uh, this one is really taking off. And I think there's probably multiple plants down in there. So it's, it's doing really, really well. Going to the left here. I think these two were, um, this one here was definitely a Lowe's rescue that I did and it, it, it went through some tough times um, but it's now finally starting to uh, really really take off you can see it's putting out some some beautiful large fly traps and then this one down here there was an offshoot of this one that was growing kind of crazy and I just kind of threw it in a small pot and you can see how crazy it's gone in this little tiny it's like a one of those like two or three inch pots and uh, it's going really really crazy it's got some of the biggest fly traps I have out of my typicals uh, so that's pretty cool that little guy is is really thriving in that little pot. Let me see if I can pick it up here so you can kind of get an idea of the size uh, difference here. So you can see there's, it's in a little tiny pot, but the the fly traps in it are really, really, really big. You can see they're comparing it to the, the B-52 here. They're not much smaller than the B-52 fly traps, so that's pretty cool. All right, so let's keep going up the middle. We've got another Walmart rescue here that's doing really well. Um, I thought this one over here had died, but now you can see there's a little bit of green coming up. It's starting to make a little bit of a recovery, so I'm assuming that it's going to probably start popping out and making a recovery. Uh, another one here from Walmart that I rescued. This is my sand trap. Uh, another squirrel, or another one that the squirrel's completely wrecked. Uh, but it's starting to make a recovery. That one there's doing really well. And then these two here are, I don't know what they're going to do. This one sprouted a flower, and I probably should have cut it off. That's probably my bad. Um, but you can see they're starting to put up a couple traps. This one's kind of weird looking. It's a little deformed, so I'm not sure if they're going to continue to take off or, or what they're going to do. But we'll keep an eye on this one and see kind of what happens. And another Walmart one back here. 
you can see that's one of my better ones. It's really kind of taken off. It's starting to put out some really healthy, beautiful traps. Uh, the one on the other side here. Oh no, this one actually, let's see if I can get a better angle. You can see it, it actually started to make a recovery. So I thought this one over here died, but it is starting to put out traps. So again, hopeful that, that uh, it'll start to put out some, some bigger, healthier traps here pretty soon. And this one over here is another Walmart rescue that I had a long time ago. Um, it had some, some pests this summer that I had to get rid of, so it's been doing a little bit better since um, I was able to, to get rid of the pests on it. Um, and it's starting to make a little bit of a recovery, but it's, it's starting to look a little more healthy and not so dead. So I, I thought this one wasn't going to make it, but here it is. It's doing pretty well right now. So, All right, and then over here you have my Purpurea, which is doing phenomenally well in here. It's really, really taken off. I'm just gonna get a little closer to it for you here, but it's it's a beautiful plant. I just did an update on this, so if you really want to dig into the purpurea, go ahead and go check out that update. I just think I just did that like my last video, so that update is ready to go. And then here's my mystery Saracenia. Um, I I think it's a Swaniania. It might not be. I've had different people interjecting different types of Saracenia, um, but it is right now at its biggest point that it's ever been, uh, and it's growing really well. So. I wanted to extend the season on it a little bit. You can see it's just putting out this new picture right there. It's doing really great. Uh, it's gonna really break my heart putting this one into dormancy because I feel like it's made such a good recovery this year and it's grown so much bigger than I thought it was going to. It's a really a beautiful plant. So I'm really excited to see how that one does going forward. Oh, you know guys, I'm, I'm doing that thing where I'm saving my worst for last, probably subconsciously, but um, okay, I'm gonna start over here. I have another, this was, I believe this was a Home Depot rescue, and you can see that it is just doing phenomenal. Um, it, this one died back a little bit after some repotting shock, uh, and it kind of slowed down, but now it's really taken off. It's putting out some really, really nice, I'll put my finger down here so you can see how big approximately the traps are. You can see that it's got some really nice big fingertip sized traps, uh, so it's doing really beautiful. You can see a lot of new growth coming up, doing really well. Uh, this was my Etsy. Venus flytrap, the A2 Fang, uh, it just continues to thrive. It, it's it, This one struggled a lot at first because it was in the mail for so long, and now it's just killing it. Look at the size of that. That's a nice big trap right there, and it just has a ton of new growth coming in. It's always continuing to put out new growth and really thriving, especially since bringing it in and putting it in the grow tent. But Okay, and then going into my last six here, these are the ones that I'm not real happy about, I'm not super thrilled about. Uh, these are the Venus flytraps that I got from Cook's Carnivores. Uh, I, I wish I could tell you why these ones aren't doing very well. Uh, I wish I had a, um, you know, a good reason. I don't want to blame the seller because I don't know for sure if that's the reason because I have a couple back here that are not doing too bad. But I just cannot get these, this G14, this Wally, -E, and then my Maroon Monster back there to snap out of whatever is going on with them. I've been... I've been working really hard to get these to snap out of it, um, uh, but it's just not a, it's not a pretty picture right now. So let me go ahead and zoom in here to the G14. Uh, you can see it's mostly all died back. I really need to trim all that off. Um, you can see there is a couple sprouts of new growth there, uh, but like some of the new growth already has some black spots on it. So I'm not super optimistic that it's going to take off. Uh, I need to trim all that back and then I need to give it some room to grow because there's some new green growth coming out of the bottom there. So it's not dead yet. It's still trying to make a recovery. And I've seen lots of Venus flytraps recover after this stage. So I do have you know, a little optimism that it's going to snap out of it. But as of right now, not doing great. Not real happy about it. But you know, sometimes with Venus flytraps, this is just kind of how it works. And then moving over to my Wally, -E, uh, kind of the same story here. It has a little more green on it and it is kicking out new growth. Um, but this one has always struggled. I've never been able to get a really healthy fly trap to pop out of this one. So kind of the same story here. You know, the funny thing is, is that these ones are getting, um, you know, the exact same care as a lot of these other Venus fly traps are right now, but they're just not able to kind of snap out of it. So um, now the only difference is, is that these ones were sort of put in the grow tent immediately, whereas a lot of these other ones were put you know, outside in the sun and then move to the grow tent. So these are these are native grow tent um, and these ones out here are started in the summer in the sun um, and then now have moved into the grow tent. But a lot of these started thriving once I moved them into the grow tent. So that could be the reason. I'm not sure. This one back here, this one is kind of a, this one's kind of a mystery to me. It was really starting to do well um, and then it kind of started dying back. Uh, so I'm not really sure what happened with this one. Uh, but you can see here that there is some new growth coming up. 
this one here was almost dead at first, but now it's starting to do the best out of all three. So I'm kind of hoping that it's just getting over the repotting shock, and now that's kicking up some new healthy growth, and now it's going to start really kind of hitting its stride. Um, again, though, I got to make some decisions on dormancy with some of these and what I want to do. And this one might be a candidate where I decide to just kind of skip dormancy this year, let it grow, um, and then let it go into dormancy next year because it's just in such bad shape. Uh, and then over here, probably the most disappointing Venus flytrap for me is my maroon monster. I just, I don't know what's wrong with this one. You can see that flytrap at the top there and the one on the left, that's how all the flytraps have been. They've come up kind of deformed and weird and I just don't know how to snap this plant out of it. I was really excited for the maroon monster. You can see it's just done almost nothing. It does keep putting traps up. They keep coming up sort of deformed and weird looking like that. Uh, and they're not growing very well. So if you guys have any suggestions for these ones that aren't growing very well, um, obviously other than putting them out in full sun because I live in the Northwest and we have snow and 20s and 30s outside right now. So I can't put them in full sun. Um, right now the best I can do is keep them under these grow lights. So, but any suggestions um, some more seasoned growers out there have, I'm open ears and I'm happy to listen and, and see what you have to say. So then I got, these are just typicals by the way. Um, but you know, they're still good looking flight traps. And then over here is the Dente. It's actually doing really well. I need to trim it up a little bit, but it's continuing to put out healthy traps and it's stayed fairly healthy. And then over here is my sort of hodgepodge of, of Saracenia, but it, it's actually probably done the best out of all of them. And it's continued to really grow well. And Saracenia are really hardy, cool plants. So I had very little doubt that this one was gonna do well, but you can actually, you can definitely see that it's, it's grown quite a bit since my last update, but overall, that is all the plants that I have for you today. So that's my my three by three grow tent, which you can see I've kind of stuffed things in there pretty tightly. It's it's pretty full and at capacity. Uh, but the Coray Grow Light has done fantastic. Um, I love this light. I wish I had two of them. Um, I'm probably going to get another one because it's just done such a great job with these Venus fly traps um, since I moved them in, being able to extend the season out. So definitely, if you guys want a good grow light. Uh, check out that Coray Grow Light. Uh, I would put two side by side um, so that I could have the full coverage in this tent. I have very little doubt that they, that, that they would grow even better, but that's something I have to look forward to coming up here soon. Uh, thanks you guys so much. I really appreciate it. Make sure to subscribe to my channel, like this video. All that stuff helps me out a ton um, in this never-ending journey to start my own carnivorous plant nursery. I'm also continuing to work on my soil, so keep a lookout for that. I got a dormancy video coming out here pretty soon, uh, especially since I got to make a decision on a lot of these flight traps and how I'm going to tackle dormancy this year. So I'm going to be talking a lot about dormancy here coming up soon. Uh, I'm going to be doing a gift idea video for, for plant lovers and carnivorous plant lovers in your life. So keep your eye out for that. And uh, just some other things coming, some reviews and stuff of some water uh, things that I have. So yeah, thanks guys for being here. I appreciate it so much. And I hope to catch you in my next video. Bye.